I'm gonna be looking at the alchemic gun today. Something that I keep calling the alchemic rifle, even though that's not its name. <laughs> uh, it does a little bit of contact damage, but the real thing what it, that it does is expose weird textures in the background. Huh, how about that? But anyway, what it really does is, con is slightly bit of contact damage and also fulfills a pretty important niche that has been missing in a lot of the game thus far. The ability for a primary weapon to be dealing poison damage. You can get uh, poison enemies on a few of the bow type weapons and similar, and, and a lot of the skills in fact. But on primary weapons, you get more things that do fire damage, you get things that do oil damage before poison up until the alchemic gun <laughs> has come into existence. And it's not even all that bad because as you can see, I'm so used to the item being on the square, or not being on square. But anyway, yeah, you can see it, does, it leaves a big, huge cloud of poison and then also does a big, a big, huge AOE of poison around that afterwards. It seems pretty decent. Oh yeah, there were two chests in here. Seems pretty decent, but I don't know how how useful it's going to be as a primary weapon, a primary damage dealing source, I suppose you could say. Because the way I look at it, it's probably way more useful for setting up setting up combinations of, of between other, you know, more primary weapons. I'm talking melee weapons that get plus 50% or turrets that get uh, plus 100% on poison targets. Those are the way more... Sure. Those are the way more useful things in my opinion when it comes to utilizing this weapon. And I guess we're gonna have to see as time goes on because I have no idea. I haven't really used... I, wow. I haven't really used this weapon for more than a few seconds at a time. So it's hard to say exactly what the strengths and weaknesses are going to be. Obviously this is going to be a showcase run, so although it will be using a bunch of other weapons, I'm still going to try to use the alchemic gun as much as possible. I don't know how, how that's going to work. It seems almost like it almost might be more useful to shoot the, shoot the alchemic gun over enemies. Oh, it seems to have a little bit of tracking. And then let the, the poison cloud that it creates do most of the damage. If there was any way to get a piercing shot on this, that would be really useful. Hard to say, though, because I I doubt that's going to happen. Also, it's a poison-based weapon, so why not check out the a little bit of uh, toxic sewer action instead of going through the old traditional promenade. I don't need to hit up that place. Sure. I don't need to hit up that place every single time. Hey, this does seem to this does seem to be a pretty decent weapon for doing a lot of AoE damage, and obviously in the good, <laughs> and obviously in these areas there are a lot of enemies to be hitting. I mean, another weapon that I should be revisiting pretty soon would be the. Give me one sec. Oh, right in the right in the ankles. Another weapon I should be revisiting at some point is the, uh, God, I cannot remember the name now, Explosive Crossbow. Why? Because the Explosive Crossbow has gotten a lot of updates, has been just significantly improved since I used it in the original uh, singular weapon challenge run. And back then it was, I don't know, I, bad? Just straight up bad? It had ammo, it didn't have a critical effect, a lot of stuff, but it was also a lot more hilarious to use because it would move a uh, weapon, or not weapons, it would move tinted rocks and doors around, so hmm. I don't regret doing that run. It was also overall a pretty fun one to do too. Got me a lot better at fighting the, uh, yeah, not quite. Got me a lot better at fighting the assassin back then as well. Took the, took the heart here because I thought, I don't know, I don't have too much confidence in this weapon to be able to carry me a lot of the way, so having a little bit of insurance. I, I feel like defensive mutations are going to be the more helpful thing in this run anyway. Also, I am getting really confused with uh, what is, what are enemies taking poison damage and what's me taking poison damage. Oh well, I'm sure that'll become a lot 
more obvious once I get out of the sewers. Uh, yeah, other defensive mutations are gonna be what? Uh, emergency triage, maybe the extra health? I don't know. Might be worth taking tranquility so when I'm away, fr so I can try to snipe enemies with this weapon. I don't know how useful it's going to be ultimately because it seems like uh, the the contact damage is less than the, the poison damage it inflicts. And you usually don't think of that happening with a damage over time things. I mean, granted, it is still extra damage, period, so who knows. This could also easily be... It's also a very good reason... Uh, another really good reason to go more defensive is because it's a lot of damage over time, so that... Mm, close. It's a lot of damage over time, so that what I'm going to want to do is hit an enemy with this and then run away and let the poison do the work for me. Yeah, it's kind of funny that this is the first really real poison-based weapon, considering how ubiquitous, I would say, poison is in, like, every other RPG to ever exist. I mean, I would say it's one of the most standard stats that you can see in anything. <laughs> nice try, Ugly Worm. All right. Yeah, and another thing I'm sure you've probably already noticed with this weapon is that the... the hero here... Uh, crawler, prisoner, whatever you want to call him. Does a bunch of stupid, cool poses every single time I take out the gun to shoot somebody. Which, it's, you know, great. Great, that's some... <laughs> it's so dumb. <laughs> but whatever, whatever, I'm sure. I'm sure there is an audience that loves that. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna be dismissive. I think it's dumb. Anyway, oh. That sweet revenge and enemies are getting on me here. All right, what else? I guess I'm going to sell this. I'm definitely going to want to get an update before the end of this. And I, because I do not think that a, there are a lot of weapons that I would say that a very early level version could do, you know, more than adequately against uh, final boss. I think I want to go down here. More than adequately against the final boss when I get there, but I don't think this one is going to be one that I want to try that with. I want the highest level version possible so I can get as much damage out of it as I can. And the turret that I have, what I'd like to do is I'd like to also get a turret that synergizes with that well, but that all depends on what I want to get. Because I am going to be trying to get the Hayabusa gauntlets... Yeah, the Hayabusa Gauntlet's blueprint in this run, because I keep putting that off, and I want to do that run next. So, come on, I gotta kind of get it soonish. All right. Okay. Yeah, that was like two solid shots from the Alchemic Gun. I keep wanting to call it the rifle. The Alchemic Rifle here... Well, right, yeah, whatever, the Alchemic Rifle... If you're wondering how the boomerang run is going, check out this cutaway. Uh, hate that weapon. Anyway, you know, that does actually bring me to another point that I have been kind of mulling over a little bit since I did that last 4-cell run, survival only. Got me thinking a bit about... Hey, hey, hey. Well, still took the poison, but whatever. Yeah, I got me uh, thinking a little bit about um, how exactly Motion Twin does planning for, like, the builds you can create. Obviously, you have three different stats. So, at most, all the builds you're going to get are either, well, not picking up any stats, and that's probably not how I would imagine most people are going to be playing the game, so... That leaves, what, like, seven different types of builds. You know, you got your three... Your three, like... Pure builds, your uh, brutality, tactics, survival build. Then you got the, uh... Wait a second. And I tried. <laughs> yeah, you got your three your three basic builds, your three uh, pure stat builds. You got your three, you got three, like, double stat builds, which actually do have names in the game. I mean, you know them from the... From the, um... Various two-stat scrolls that you can find around the place. You got your Minotaur build, which is 
brutality and survival. You got your uh, assassin build, which is brutality and tactics. Mm, sure. And then you got your, uh, I think it's the guardian build, which is uh, survival and survival and tactics. Then, of course, you got, like, a spreading them all out among you, which I'm just gonna call the Fool's Build, because why would you be doing that? Especially with the revelations. Wow, I said it again. Especially with the revelations about, uh, stat scaling, it seems like that is one that you do not want to touch with a ten-foot pole. Maybe I'll just go with the Resident Evil way of saying it, revelatons. But anyway... And obviously, the fact that you get the two stat scrolls say that Motion Twin plans for you to be playing... Oh, nice, I actually managed to get it. Motion Twin plans for you to be playing mostly building two stats. Not to have one major stat and everything else is a dump stat along with that. You know, dump stat for the extra health or whatever. That you're not really supposed to be stacking everything into one. Of course, that's how I like to play the game. I mean, that's my that's been my favorite way of playing since the Elemental update. But I don't think that's what I should be doing at this point. Especially with the way that, you know, even stacking survival, I was still getting hit pretty hard in a lot of the fights that I was doing in the end game on 4-cell difficulty. I, that's, you know, 4-cell difficulty. I mean, you can't get away from the fact that it is the hardest that the... Uh, well, one could actually call it perhaps some sort of, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, okay. One could call it, I don't know, some sort of uh, nocturnal horse, perhaps. Oh, of course I wouldn't, that would be ridiculous. But yeah, hardest the game has ever been, so it's no surprise that enemies are doing tons and tons of damage. But it seems like if I was building, say, a guardian or a minotaur type build, doing survival and brutality or tactics, I would have even more health and probably not, well, I would be sacrificing a lot of damage, but it's pretty obvious that that would help the survivability more than just building survival. If you're if you're following me here. Okay, let's see how this goes. And I feel pretty good. Okay. It's a good pickup too. But anyway, back to what I was saying. So pretty much, yeah, you would sacrifice some ability to kill things, but you would also get probably a lot less likelihood that you're going to die anytime you do anything in the game. Which I think is probably a lot more valuable than being able to kill things as quickly as possible. Especially, and I would say most notably, the hand, which is one real tough boss that takes a lot of hits to go down, but will also deal a ton of damage. I, there's a... There's a reason why I like to, on 4... Hey, on 4-cell mode, like to save all of my flask charges to go fight the hand, because I think I am going to just straight up need them at that time. And even if I don't, it's always nice to have a little bit of extra... A little bit of extra uh, invincibility. Ooh, tempting, but no. A little bit of extra invincibility if I'm using emergency triage, then... Uh, because I can't get the parries consistently enough if I'm using a shield, and you can't have them frozen forever if you're using some sort of crowd control. So I think that trying to build more for... Oh, this was a terrible idea. But trying to build more for... Uh, a bit more survivability is the best idea. I don't know, and, and, the, and the other idea comes from the fact that when you think about it, Motion Twin designed the game, A. Eh? Motion Twin designed the game to be this way. It's no coincidence that... It's no coincidence that your, uh... That your usual stat scroll distribution is going to be... You know, not just a single stat every single time. They're not uh, you, every single stat that you get isn't going to be a scroll of power. And obviously, with the symmetrical lance run I did, it seems like they uh, maybe not too subtly try to get you to use some of your off stats by uh, let's say providing them in a very obvious way to you. 
So that's, that's, that's something that I always like to think about when I'm, uh... When I'm playing a game and I'm running into some sort of obvious issue or obvious difficulty, it's like, so what is, what was the developer thinking that I was, hey, is this, yep, fun stuff. What was the developer thinking that I was going to do? Also, is there something, no. <laughs> what was the developer thinking that I was going to do when, when they were designing this part of the game? Because obviously, I don't think Motion Twin, Motion Twin put the four cell difficulty in the game with the idea that well nobody's ever going to be able to beat this. So, so that's why I got to thinking. Well, how would they approach it? How did they plan for me to be approaching it? And I think the idea is you really should be building two stats. That way you get even more health, especially if you're building survival and brutality, the the Minotaur build, for example. And that gives you a ton of health. Well, also not... It really does hamper your ability to kill things, but I, I don't know. Yeah, screw it. I'm just going to go with the full build that I said before. Oh, well, thus far, I think it's been doing pretty good for damage. Uh, the, the alchemic rifle... Still not the name of it. The alchemic gun is doing pretty decent, but uh, it's... The momentary second that it takes to fire the alchemic gun is kind of frustrating. It's It reminds me a lot of some of the other, yeah, more difficult type weapons to use, your heavy crossbows or your explosive crossbow like I was talking about earlier. And that momentary pause obviously got me down in a pit in the first part of the game. But honestly, I, I'm more worried about it in the later game, where there's going to be some tough, tough enemies to be going through. And I'm going to be frozen for a second because I have to uh, reach my inner Dio and pose first. That was kind of cool to see that. <laughs> it's kind of cool to see that in slow motion. As it is, uh, stacking up a ton of poison, it's working. I think I didn't feel like I was in any danger against the Incomplete One there, for example, but the Incomplete One is also kind of a punk, so who cares? Also, I should be collecting some of these cells as I'm going through these areas because I am going to want to unlock the Hayabusa... Not the Hayabusa Boots, the Hayabusa Gauntlets, when the time comes. Do I want to go Slumbering Sanctuary? I haven't gone Fog Fjord in a little while, so that's a sure, sure. I was thinking about going to the, going through the full sewers, going for the Watcher fight, but then I decided not to. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Well, as long as I can kind of predict the Kamikaze bats coming up there, I guess I'll be okay to take care of those guys. This could also be a really good I this could also be a really good opportunity to use the the poison trail that the projectile leaves behind here too to kind of create uh, some areas that I can use to kill bat before they even get near me. I'm going to just shoot one out randomly and then if any bats are coming, I can guide them right into the poison cloud. Obviously did not work as effectively as I wanted there. Maybe here. Yeah, come on. Okay, okay. Not perfect. The poison doesn't last as long as I would like it to. Also pretty pro dodge. But yeah, poison doesn't last as long as I would like it to, but hey, it kind of works. I mean, it's it's a lot like uh, using... A lot like using Toxic Cloud in these cases. Overall, this weapon is a lot like Toxic Cloud, period, where you have a lot of area of denial for flying enemies and good synergies with other weapons. But not really something you would be dealing damage to enemies by itself. And I mean, that's how I described the Alchemic Gun in the first place. But, you know, the Alchemic Gun does have damage associated with it. It's not just a... It's not a... a ice bow type weapon where... You're really just supposed to use it to freeze things, not do damage, even though... Oh, thank you, shield. That momentary invincibility saved me. 
where the ice bow just exists to freeze enemies. And, I mean, you can do damage with it. I've done an entire run only using an ice bow, but I, I guess... I guess I would say it's not manufacturer approved, manufacturer approved uh, usage of the weapon. Oh, <laughs> that I, somehow my brain did not register that there were bats there. Oh, come on, one more second there. Well, whatever. I could... close enough. I bet it would also be really effective. It would also be a really effective weapon against <laughs> against these uh, the host zombies here, because as soon as you kill them, the the worms that they spawn are immediately going to also be poisoned and be continuously poisoned until they die. Yeah, that's not bad at all. I mean, I guess this is still two cell difficulty, so which is weird because I usually don't think of two cell diff. I mean, yeah, yeah, it is. Okay. <laughs> Two-cell difficulty usually isn't... I don't know, maybe with the introduction of four-cell difficulty, they made some of the earlier ones easier. Maybe I'm just super good at the game now? <laughs> Which sounds like a really conceitful way to... Ugh, I don't know. Let's just go with that. Still not stopping me from getting uh, exploded every single opportunity. I should have one more shop that I can... One more shop that I should be able to get to here, see if I can get an upgrade for the alchemic gun. Yeah, with the uh, brutality giving me a lot more... With brutality giving me a lot more health, I feel like that was the obvious choice. Did I go in this shop, the first one here? I don't know. Brutality was the obvious choice uh, of the... Of the two options that I could get for. Well, what do you got? I'm going to take this because it's going to help more when I use the Hunter's Grenade. Also, I think the the crowd control is going to be a lot better. I, somehow I doubt that I'm going to be 100% extra damage. That only affects the, the first hit from the gun, so I don't think that any sort of synergy is going to be incredible with... Uh, with that, with the flame grenade. I don't know, maybe, maybe not. I mean, it's still 387 and 430 hits. <laughs> now the initial damage just isn't good. I think I'm doing okay for health right now. I still have the heart. I still have... I'm halfway down, but... Yeah, I also totally forgot that you don't get a health refill. Nah. You don't get a health refill upon going to the clock tower. That was a mistake that killed me the last time that I forgot that. Not nearly as bad right now, though. Yeah. What if I just lead them through this poison? Might... I'm going to say... Keep it on the docket of strategies to use. Yeah, here. This, this is a good opportunity for this. Okay, just so... If I said fire it out here. As much as possible. Now, lead, it, lead them through it. Man, maybe I should have done this on 3-cell difficulty. I don't know, is it just me? Because it feels like it wasn't... I, I'm having... I feel like I'm having a he an easier time with... with, uh... two-cell difficulty than I ever used to in the past. Oh, come on, guys. Why you always gotta be blocking me like that? Yeah, freeze him inside the poison. Eh? Close. Now he's shedding that poison really quickly. Minus 40% damage taken. You've sold me. Unfortunately, you have not sold that. I don't know. There was some dumb pun that I was going for. I don't even care about it anymore. <laughs> Come on, tracker. I'm just going to shoot it against the wall. And you can sit in that stinky, stinky cloud. 
100 damage each second that he was in there. I don't know, I think that's pretty effective. I'm not gonna say it's the most effective thing that I've ever seen in this game, but... I mean, as far as uh, damage over time stuff goes, usually... I don't know, uh, bleed. Bleed is usually what you look for as far as damage over time stuff goes, because the... <laughs> Man, it was sniped me there. Usually damage over time is bleed, because the best damage over time weapon in the game, unquestionably I would say, is the, uh, the throwing knives, uh, knife storm. Not even throwing knives is the weapon, but the knife storm item is just fantastic for stacking up tons and tons of bleed at one at one time and getting, uh, like anything but the heftiest enemy down almost immediately. And along with, uh, cluster grenades, I would say it's the highest burst damage that you're going to be getting in the game. A knife storm or, uh, properly leveled up knife storm or... Or cluster bomb. And really, now that it's, uh... Nice... Now that the cluster bomb is considered a... Now the cluster bomb is considered a brutality weapon, it's uh, nice to see that you got two really good burst skills for two different sorts of... Uh... Two different sorts of, um... God, words are just escaping me right now. Two different sorts of, uh, stats. Your melee and your... Your melee and your, um... Okay! Yeah, melee and, uh, range are both represented very well with those. Alright, jeez. I don't know why I was having such an absurdly difficult time with bats, but hey, I guess it happens. Oh, hey. Should have went for the ice bow there, that would have been a really effective tactic. I would say using the ice bow isn't really... I mean, this is this is just a showcase run, it's not a... It's not a uh, super special challenge run, which I would not be using an ice bow for. But it's not dealing enough damage that I think it would be cheating to kind of open that up, open up a, a fight with that. Well, I mean, it, it, it's also the damage reduction and... Yeah, you know what? Let's make a quick one. Way too many 50 minute runs that I've been going to here. Also, Ice Bowl gonna be super useful for getting blueprints in just a second. The Assassin is going to be a little more resistant to this than usual because of its kind of low damage. Wait, did the door open? <laughs> it didn't look like it o uh, Whatever, anyway. Yeah, it has relatively low damage, but... Okay, never mind. It does not have relatively low damage. I lied about that. <laughs> and that's the thing with the Assassin. Very high damage, very difficult to dodge attacks, but if you know it, you can blitz her down real fast because her health pool is low. And I think that works. I mean, I know that there are plenty of people that... I mean, as far as I know, the Assassin is not considered like a super easy boss or anything, so I would say that Motion Twin did a decent job of, eh? <laughs> of balancing her. Maybe it's just I've gotten so much experience against... I don't know, it's... it's. I've said this before, but it's always hard to say exactly... Like, okay, what's... Re I've played this game for so long, it's impossible for me to tell sometimes, like, what the really hard parts are at this point. Uh, it's, it's this weird sort of blindness, which is why I always feel like... Whenever I get asked for advice on stuff, it's always like, well... Uh, I don't know because I almost do it just instinctually at this point having oh, yeah I did pass the 600 hour mark in the game. So yay <laughs> After 600 hours, I don't even see zombies as a threat anymore They're just there even though they've killed me more than any other enemy in the game Inquisitors are pretty quickly getting like that Yeah 
All right, I should I should finally use the. Uh, I should finally get to use in the uh, hunter's grenade here, so I don't have to be hauling that pretty useless. In fact, let's go. So I don't have to be hauling this useless uh, item around for too long. That is not really what I meant to do, but whatever, it's fine. Come on, Lancer, let's get this done. Oh. Nice and nice. And sure. <laughs> I opened it, I'll do it. Forgot that my... Uh, Grenade was still on cooldown. That could have been an issue. It's all about the damage over time, never about the initial. So used to blitzing these guys down so fast, so that when it it's even just as the smallest amount of waiting, I don't even think about it. Also, I was just uh, insulting the zombies, and they uh, ended that challenge pretty quickly. So nice, nice, nice. <laughs> I think the poetic irony is something that I bring to these videos that you... Well, let's be honest, you see in a lot of other ones, but hey, I do it too. Give me Tornado, don't make me come back here for round two with the Hunter's Grenade. No such luck. Oh, now, well, first off, anything? I'll reroll once. <laughs> Ah, good stuff, good stuff. Where were you in the, like, five other runs where I went through to the castle and... Went through to the castle and managed to never find a single boomerang? <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, I could get all three keys here. I don't think it'll be too hard because the, the hit-and-run tactics have been working out stellar for this weapon. But, at the same time, that is also a lot of extra time spent, you know, just exploring through the castle, trying to figure out was where all the entrances the areas are. <laughs> just gonna shoot you in the face over and over until you decide to give up the ghost, my man. There, finally. <laughs> I was a little disappointed that you can't just leave after getting the key from the one. That could have been bad if I didn't have that ice grenade. <laughs> you know, a lot of people have been throwing down the idea that that uh, five cell difficulty might just be straight up permanently cursed. I think looking at this infection mechanic, you know, you get hit by the mini boss, you get a point of infection, you get six points or so, you just take damage until you die. Maybe that's what they're planning for, five, five cell mode. Just making every enemy cause infection, and then making it so that... Probably over here. Every enemy cause infection, and then... Uh, you gotta, if you take too many points of infection, you just get hit too much in any level. You'll die. <laughs> it's something that gives that kind of curse, like, unforgivingness without it being just super obnoxious and terrible. At least that's kind of what I would hope. Because certainly the infection idea here is interesting, but it's also not something that's uh, super prevalent. It's just for the mini-bosses of these areas. And, well, okay, I guess I am going to go for three keys anyway. Hey, girl, you know me. I like to get three key. Oh, uh, what? What? <laughs> Oh, I, you kicked me. Okay. <laughs> I was thinking, it's like, wait, wait a second. Since when can Lancers push you that far? <laughs> oh, this is going to be a little bit more difficult. And a little bit more risky. All right. <laughs> Managed to get away with only two points of infection. That's good. Because the last thing I would need is to lose my heart to something that stupid. Real question becomes, where is the exit to this place? Up here? Absolutely not. As far as I can tell, I don't think the Guardian Knights 
become invincible to projectiles like the... Yep. Like the uh, spinners do when they're spinning around. I don't know. I also haven't done too much testing around with... Wait! Wait! What am I doing? I could have used either one of those. I just need a single... Uh, okay, 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 okay. I'm just gonna go back. There's... Oh, wait! No, that... I For some reason, my brain said that was a teleporter. What? Oh... I'm losing it, man. <laughs> oh, well. I guess I'm just gonna go without a... I guess I'm just gonna go without a, um... Uh, skill in one slot. <laughs> Might not be a challenge run, but I guess it kind of is now. <laughs> also, I didn't talk to the collector. Oh god, it's just a cavalcade of errors. <laughs> so it seems like even if he blocks the projectile, he still gets hit with the poison. Which is good, because the poison is the real moneymaker and not so much a projectile itself. And even, if, and even if those guys are invincible, I'm still able to... I tried. I'm still able to lay down a lot of poison on them. So, you know what? I'm, I'm actually, I think, more and more liking it for, liking this weapon for this fight in particular. I mean, I do also have 21 brutality, which is ew, quite a bit. Might not have a shield, but that doesn't mean that I don't have any way of protecting myself. What? <laughs> okay. Okay, and okay. I mean, that is my catchphrase, apparently. Ah! <laughs> There's that weird uh, jumping error again. I think I'm finally starting to get used to this guy's attacks quite a bit more, which is good because, God, is he a tough one. He is a tough customer. All right, just get that poison out, get that poison out, and good. All right, a little bit more, a little bit more. You know what? I don't even know what I was thinking there. I guess I was thinking that I was going to kill the... I was going to kill the um, scorpion faster than I ended up doing so. Well, whatever, it doesn't matter. And done. Yeah, I tried. I gave it my all. Yes, I think I am finally, finally properly dodging his melee attacks, which is perfect. That is something that has been plaguing me for way too long. Well, just pop a potion right there because everything was not working. Or everything was on cooldown. Oh! Cool! <laughs> Alright, let's remember to talk to the collector this time. <laughs> Uh, I have never accidentally went to the end of the game with a with a blueprint before, and I would like to keep it that way. Uh, next up is going to be the Hayabusa Gauntlets. Well, I at least need to keep this one. Come on, it was the weapon for the run. Yep, I'm gonna try to get the full Hayabusa set, gauntlets and uh, boots, because I think that will be fun. And yeah. Oh, whatever. It's not like I need an upgraded version of it right now, anyway. <laughs> All right. Uh, I want to say final verdict on this weapon. I like it. It does more damage than I kind of thought it was going to. It is also a little cumbersome to use, so it's not perfect. But hey, I'm going to say would use again. 10 out of 10. <laughs> <laughs> 